The venerable 24 to 70 mm f2.8 has been a stable lens for the professional photographer for decades. The reason for this is simple. It covers such a useful focal range that it can be used for everything from landscapes to portraits and everything in between. And now, as more of us are transitioning to video, or at least adding video to our capabilities, this focal range is still a bastion of utility and versatility. What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to the channel and to this mini-series on lens breathing performance. If you're new to all of this, you might be wondering, what the heck is breathing? Put simply, breathing is the term used to describe a change in angle of view that accompanies focusing. This aberration poses a problem for video shooters where the constant change in composition while focusing can be a significant distraction. Fortunately, purpose-built video and cinema lenses are designed to prevent this from happening. Unfortunately for most of us, using hybrid lenses on our mirrorless cameras, many of our lenses still suffer from this aberration. Now I just posted a video looking at the Canon or looking at Canon's Monster 28 to 70 F2L, which it turns out has a monster sized angle of view shift problem as well. And I wanted to follow that with a look at a much more mainstream and in many ways more reasonable counterpart, the RF 24 to 70 F2.8 LIS USM. Now with that said, my test protocol for these lenses is simple. I have a pair of white targets, just a bit of gaffer tape stuck to a black photographic background. I set up my camera so that the targets are positioned near the edges of the frame, but not outside of it, and shoot a series of images made starting at the minimum focus distance and moving out towards infinity using my camera's focus bracketing function. Now for completeness, these test images are shot as small JPEGs, so any size JPEG would work. And as an aside, there aren't any advantages to using RAW here, so I didn't. I also didn't turn off distortion correction either, as in part because most of us will have it on anyway, and in part because more lenses these days are forcing us to use it than has ever been the case in the past. Either way, these JPEGs are taken to some software that I wrote that measures the distance between the centers of the target patches in each frame. These are ultimately compared to the last image in the set, which is shot at infinity focus. Now, by looking at the infinity focus position, which tells us the true focal length and therefore angle of view of the lens and comparing that with each of the closer positions, I can determine how much the angle of view is changing and plot that against the focus distance and focus position, which is read from the lens's metadata. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the results for this lens. Now, overall breathing on this lens is very well corrected. Well, with the worst case actually being a total shift of just under 4% at 24 millimeters. So at 24 millimeters, the total amount of focus shift is, as I said, just under 4% wider. This means that the minimum focusing distance, you'd have an angle of view on this lens equivalent to approximately a 23.1 millimeter lens. And the first 2% of that shift happens between 300 millimeters and infinity, or about a foot at infinity. Right. At 35 millimeters, the total is even lower, coming in at most 1% wider than listed. This translates to an angle of view equivalent of 34.7 millimeters at the minimum focus distance. At 50 millimeters, the total amount of focus shift is, or focal shift, is about 1% narrower. So we've changed directions going from wider to narrower. This means that the minimum focus distance at that, or at that minimum focus distance, the lens will have an angle of view equivalent to approximately a 50.5 millimeter lens. And again, like the 35 millimeter position, we're talking about less than 1% change over the entire focal range. Finally, at 70 millimeters, the total focus shift is only 2.8%, resulting in an angle of view equal to a 72 millimeter lens at the minimum focusing distance. Here, that first 2% of the breathing happens between 0.5 meters and infinity, or about 18-ish inches and infinity. The 20 to 4 to 70 also score underscores another point in the overall discussion on breathing, which is that you cannot just assume that an internal focus lens will always behave the same way. In the case of the 28 to 70, which I put up the video and I'll link to, the lens always got wider as it was focused closer. Here, however, we see that the angle of view gets wider at the shorter focal lengths, but gets narrower at the longer focal lengths. So that's the data. How do we interpret it? Well, to start with, Canon certainly doesn't market this lens as having limited or no breathing. And you could make the argument that yes, it still breathes and perhaps breathes more than it really should or could. On the same token, if breathing wasn't a primary concern in lens, the lens's design process, it turned in a very solid performance. Well, 
it turned in a very solid performance regardless. Put simply at any focal length, I do not have a problem using this lens to shoot video. In fact, this is my go-to lens on my primary video camera for that. Overall, breathing is controlled well enough that in most situations where I've used this lens, other optical effects, such as changes in bokeh, are bigger distractions when pulling focus. So, that's breathing on Canon's RF 24-70mm f2.8 L IS USM lens. If you found this useful, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Finally, if you'd like to support this video and future videos like it, please consider hitting that thanks button if you can, or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.